And you got another comeback story on Willie Wilcox. Yes. So how about this? I mean, how? Uh, sensational, obviously, eye-grabbing headline. Um, and I'm, I'm proud of him to, to speak up and come clean and tell us about his struggle because I'm enamored with the fact, I mean, that he was able to hide it and oh, stay alive for as long as he did. Listen to this. He said, um, opioids, Oxycontin, hydrocodone, Percocet, Percocet my, muscle relaxes, Xanax, heroin. I was a drug addict with a PGA Tour card. So they don't test, I guess. First of all, that was the not first for question. recreation. I don't think that was the first question I had. But but I mean, yeah, heroin is not recreation. Yeah, well, what, what you would think they would? Do you would a, think that would be the first thing they test for for stuff like that? If, Opioids. Yeah, I, I, he had this stuff. In, I watched him talking about this, and you guys have to definitely. Um, it was the Fire Pit Collective who put the mm -hmm. original interview together, and I encourage you to go read it. It's a it's, it's a well put together interview. Is that Shipnock? Um, I don't. I know he's part of that, but I don't know if he did the interview. But he Willie was Will was talking about how early in the week, the less pressure days, mm -hmm. like Monday, Tuesday, he was getting one hour of sleep a night. You know, the, with the, dr the, the drugs were fully controlling him. He said he'd be lucky if he got four hours on like a Thursday, you know, when, when they, they start to actually play. But how he lived to tell the story is incredible. And He's secondly, that he was able to, to continue to play that. I, I mean, I, I, I would imagine those close to him probably saw the warning signs, but he kept it well hidden from the public. That's for sure. Yeah. Was he any good? I'm not a. I have no. I mean, idea. he was good enough to be a PGA Tour Again, player. Again, not a household yeah. name, but but I think the closer you get to the game, the more you realize like the amount of talent. Like for say, let's say like on the Corn Ferry Tour, it just shows you what it takes to get to that next level and play on the tour. But um, it also shows you that this you know epidemic of of uh, you know drugs and 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 things like heroin it it extends to all walks of life. I mean, it here's does, a guy yeah. who's playing on the PGA Tour and he's struggling with it. Um, but he's, he's been posting some pictures clean. I think he's clean. Like he said, 14 or 15 months. I, I, I commend him for coming clean and talking about his story mm -hmm. because I would hope that it might, there, there's gotta be others who are struggling in the dark. And I think that it might be a way for them to, to reach out and see that there is hope. There's hope to break it because the way that he explained that he was living, it was a living hell. Yeah, and, and I'm just looking he up. Wanted his way out. I'm looking at just past performance. Zach, to answer your question, he averaged about six hundred thousand dollars a year. One year he made a million bucks, bunch of top tens. So he's made some money. He's probably spent most of it, unfortunately, on the drugs. Well, that's stuff. what I'm saying. Like, remember, remember Kisner's quote where he said, like, talking about winning, and he jokingly said the PGA Tour plays pays way too much for tenth place. Exactly. You know, here's a guy if he can just kind of hang on, you know, enough to make six hundred thousand dollars a year. But as he even said, he did burn through almost all of that in, in the drugs. The drugs right. And how much does he really life. get of that? I mean, with his team and his coach and everything, like that 600 is probably easily 200 when it's all said and done. But, you know, we saw another story of Chris Kirk coming back from rehab from being an alcoholic. Yeah. And he came back and he started lighting it up again. So I wish him well. I mean, he's like a comeback story that people are rooting for, Will. 100%. I, I think he's um, signed up for a qualifier. I'm not exactly sure the exact details, but I'm pretty sure that he might be um, signing up to try and make another run now that he's sober. Okay. And to answer your Good question, shit. this is a Mark Baldwin article on the Fire Pit Collective. He had put it together. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, again, just, just the pulling the tidbits out of this interview, some of the stuff he said, it's just incredible that he, he lived to tell the story um, and, and to, to get to clean again. It's just... Just happy to see it end that way yeah. and not the other way that unfortunately too many of these heroin stories end.